so I love to do these things. Um, I introduce myself to all of you, but I'm Connie with Pack Your Bags Travel. I'm a full service travel agency. I specialize in groups, but as I tell people, I'll send anybody anywhere around the world if they want to go because there's no sense in my business. You can't stuff to specialize because there's so many great, wonderful places to see and stay. Um, Ireland is one of my favorite foreign destinations. And uh, Katie and I got talking in September, and um, it was something that she has wanted to do for quite some time, a long time, and it's something that I have experience in doing, so we thought it was the perfect match to put something together. Haunted Ireland, paranormal tours, all that kind of stuff is um, a real up and coming uh, travel destination and need, and um, a lot of people don't do it. So this tour is custom, I put it together based on uh, the sites that I have been to, the top sites, the first time trips. This would be a first time trip for everybody. Okay, so first time trips in Ireland, there's just certain things that you just have to see for your very first trip. So we've included that and also included some out of the way, great haunted, spirited sites that carry a lot of energy. Ireland, like a lot of the European cities, is full of history. They've been around a long time, and unfortunately, a lot of bad stuff happened there. But for us, that creates great spirit energy and, and things to go hiking and investigating and seeing. So, um, I this is, I'm going to work on this. So this tour is actually booked through CIE Tours. They are partially owned by the Ireland government, and that's one of the reasons I work with them. They've been in business 87 years. Um, they get first pick, they get brand new buses, they get first pick at hotels and sightseeing things to do because they are partially owned by the Irish government, which um, I like having first dibs on everything and not behind other people. There's a few things I'm going to skip because I'm not representing the, country, the, um, the company and it's not forwarding there. My tech guy. I moved it. I got it. Okay. This is my husband, Jack. He's my tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, in creating customized tours for Ireland, I am not the type of person, and we discussed this with Katie. I want to see as much as I can, but it is a vacation, so I don't want to go, 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 go. So we broke it up with two nights, two nights, two nights, and one night. So you're not packing every night, getting up the next day, and taking off. And when it comes to that, I also, we generally do a departure time around 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to go out and enjoy the pubs, which is obviously part of the Irish experience, you don't have to worry about getting to bed at 8 o'clock, so you have to be up and out of your room by 7 o'clock. Morning. So we do do a little bit later departure time between 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Every so often that does have to change depending on the distance we're traveling. We are never on the bus more than two hours a day and we do make several stops. So the way the itinerary flows is we'll get on in the morning, we'll drive a little bit, we'll stop and see something. Get on the bus, drive a little bit, stop and see something. So you're never really on the bus for more than two hours. Trip highlights. So we're going to start every day with a daily meditation with Katie on the bus. So it's a great way to start our day. You get up, you eat your breakfast, we get on the bus. Our bus driver will give us a rundown of what we're doing that day and what to expect. And then Katie will get us in the right mood, raise our, raise our vibration, get us all happy and set to go to enjoy the day. And, and, and hopefully safe, like keep everybody kind of in a yes. bubble while they're, while they're in those haunted spaces <laughs> so nobody brings anybody home. Yes, nobody's allowed on the bus. Yeah, right. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta make that clear that they don't bring home any energies. <laughs> a little stink train at the doorway of the bus and move them out. Um, so some of our highlights, we're going to the Daily Meditation with Katie, uh, tour of Dublin, excursion to Spike Island, the Tarbert Ferry, this is the Tarbert Ferry right here, that's a lot of fun. Uh, site Megan's Church, the Dingle Peninsula, and Rock of Cashel. Um, there just isn't enough room to talk about all the highlights, so we just broke it out like that. So we are going to take a flight out of JFK, round trip, non-stop. The um, flight departs at 9 p.m. We are flying on Aer Lingus, non-stop flight into Dublin. We get in around 8.30 in the morning. We will be picked up by our tour guide after we clear immigration, claim your luggage, clear customs. We will meet, he meets us and escorts us to the bus, piles on the bus, and off we go. Our first stop is going to be an included traditional Irish, bre Irish breakfast at a local restaurant. 
we'll have breakfast there, and then we head right into Dublin. Um, it is fairly early in the morning on a Saturday. Usually traffic isn't too bad, so that's always a wonderful thing to start our day like that. Our tour of Dublin, uh, we'll have a walk-on guy come on the bus, and our driver will drive around where our guide explains everything, all the highlights in Dublin there is to see, the historic sites, the things you've seen on TV, and the, you know, the memorable spots. Uh, then we will be stopping at Trinity College in the Books of Kells. Book of Kells is um, just amazing. It is uh, an old manuscript. It's all under glass. The lights are dim, you know, to help preserve it. Uh, and it's beautiful. And you walk through there, and if anybody is a, um, um, I know it's going to be Harry Potter fan, mm -hmm. it's the library for Harry Potter. Oh. <coughs> Oh, for heaven's sakes, yeah. yes. It's great. It's yeah. amazing in there. Um, the books go all the way to the ceiling. They have all the busts along. You can see all the famous art authors and stuff. It's a great area, and there's benches in there, too. So it's really wonderful to just sit and take in the energy. It is a very heavy energy, a good energy, but a heavy energy. You can feel the history in the building. And there are a few haunted ghost stories in there, too, which we will let the guide tell us about. Then we're headed to, oh, that's still Book of Kells. Then we're headed, headed to um, St. Michael's Church. So St. Michael's Church is a very old church, and it is, um, we can go in to the church itself. We get a, have a tour guide. He'll tell us about the history of the church. But the real exciting about the church is underneath the church. There's tombs under the church. And in the tombs, the mummified bodies are still there. They are so old, and they have been, unfortunately, damaged over the years that some of the skeletons are no longer in the coffins. They're hanging out of the coffins. And I'm, I'm, you know, I could do a whole tour, but I'm not going to, so I'm, I'm gonna highlight. So there are some specific mummies that have some amazing stories, like the guy with the missing fingers, and um, why there's a couple heads piled up over here and not with their bodies. And, but if you're climbing down these really steep stairs with the low ceilings, and it's dark, and it's just a wonderful place. And actually, it got closed down last year because it was um, uh, not ransacked, but people came in and, and messed with it. So they shut it down for quite a while, but they recently reopened it. So really excited to be able to take you guys there. So we head back to our hotel that night. That is the day. The day we fly in, we, we do this, we do that, we do, you know, we stop for lunch. Um, lunch is not included anywhere except our one day in Spike Island. Your lunch is on your own. Our bus driver will have that planned where we're going to stop. Um, bowl of soup and a little sandwich is very popular for lunch in Ireland. Um, we check into our hotel that night, and you will have an included dinner that night. You all come together that night for a dinner. We'll talk about the week and what's expected and the way things are going to work. Our bus driver will always tell us what time we have to be up the next morning and we're taking off. Breakfast is included every day at our hotel. Um, it's usually buffet style and they're wonderful. I've never had a bad breakfast. Um, and one thing to note for those of you that love your oatmeal, um, it is tradition in Ireland next to the oatmeal is a bottle of whiskey. And you put a nice little shot of whiskey and oatmeal in the morning, that's how they start their day in Ireland. So. <laughs> I might have to. I know, I can't believe you guys have told me that already. <laughs> <laughs> it's in every rest, it's, it's just commonplace. That's just what they do. So we'll get up the next day, and we're going to head up to um, visit the Hill of Terra. It's about a half hour, 45 minute ride north of Dublin. Beautiful countryside. We might make some stops along the way. Um, this is our itinerary, and things might have to move depending on traffic, what's available, what's open. But over the years of doing this, I find that our bus driver always sticks in special little stops, the unscheduled stops, so you really get to see even more than what's on the itinerary. So the Hill of Terra is, um, uh, there's tombs there. It's considered a sacred land. Uh, battles have been fought there. And um, I've actually never been. It's a place I've always wanted to go to. Then we're going to head on to Boyne Valley. Oh. I know, New Grange. Um, Boyne Valley, there was a huge battle there, and I don't have all my um, stats correctly, um, but there's a huge battle at Boyne Valley, and um, over 6,000 people died there, some in unmarked graves and kind of stuff, and then after we visit 
uh, the Boyne Valley Visitor Center. We're heading on to, um, uh, well, we head on to Drahada after that, and it's a nearby town. So I'm not sure if we're going to have lunch at uh, Boyne Valley Visitor, Visitor Center. We're going to wait until we get to Drahada for our lunch. So Drahada is a nearby town. We're going to do a walking tour, but that's where the big battle started and ended in Boyne Valley. So there are two battle sites that we're going to visit that really shaped that area of Ireland and uh, St. Patrick and everything. So it's really steeped in history on top of the fact that there was this huge battle that came in from the water and then carried on to the Boyne Valley. That night, we are, we're going to head back. We're going to make it back to Dublin, hopefully by 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then have the rest of the day at Beecher. So you can go visit Grafton Street for um, shopping. You can go visit um, um, Temple Bar area, which is all the bars and the nightlife, a lot of fun. There's a ton of shopping. And as a side note, <coughs> this is Sunday night. And just up the street from our hotel is Cassidy's Bar. And on Sunday night at Cassidy Bar, they have Rake the Ashes come in, which is an amazing Irish band. Oh. And so I will highly recommend to all of you that you go to Cassidy's Bar on Sunday night for music and dancing and drinks, and it's a lot of fun. Um, in Ireland, you will see if you go to the pubs that night, it is commonplace in tradition that um, after everybody goes home from work and they've had dinner and done the dishes and helped the kids, you just go to the bar and you pull out your instrument and play. So one night there might be five people, one night there might be ten people, and you could be sitting there watching them for 10 hours, or not 10 hours, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing you know, two more people walk in. And it just keeps building and building and building. And I just find it fascinating that in Ireland it's just accepted that you can go to any pub at night and just start playing and other people show up and they play. So um, it's a wonderful time. Dublin's a beautiful city. It's huge. There's wonderful, great sites to go see and do. So day three, we're going to get up and we're going to head towards Leap Castle and Rock a Cashel. So this will take us in, in country a little bit and then down to the south. Leap Castle is an absolutely amazing castle. It's considered the most haunted castle in Ireland. Um, and the fascinating thing about it is there's a family that lives in it. So a lot of the castles we're going to see have no interior, half fallen down, you know, that kind of stuff. This castle has a huge battle history to it. It has been through a lot of uh, family war, family massacre, and it was closed for many, many years. And this family came in and opened it and renovated it. So they live in this main area right here, and then a little into here. But there's a wonderful spiral staircase that goes up to the top. This is called the blood something, I forget, over there. A lot of people were killed there. There was a jail underneath during wartime. They kept a lot of people in there. I've seen stuff in this castle that I've never seen before and I've never seen anywhere else. And when I've gone to this castle before with other people, they said they'd never go back. That's how exciting it is. It's been is. featured on many shows, haunted shows. It is probably considered throughout the world the, one of the top places. And um, from the sounds of it, it is not always a happy spirit that is there. It's kind of a noisy, angry spirit. Yes. And of all the places we're going to go visit, this is the only place it's that has a nasty, angry spirit. Yeah. But I've also had people come out of this castle and never felt hey, Listen, you can go to so downtown Schenectady and find a nasty exactly. spirit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but he stays in the <laughs> castle. And interesting side note, the guy that lives there comes to the U.S. and plays at the party bus in Saratoga. That's right, you told me that. Yeah. Fun. yeah, he seems like a really nice guy. He's obviously possessed, but he <laughs> seems like a nice guy. Like, you gotta be crazy to live in that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He lives there by himself. No, he has, he has wife and children. His children, I believe, have since moved out of college. I think one, one out of college, one might be in college, but um, him and his wife live there. And there is a section here not allowed to enter. But when you go in, it's the dining room all set up and they've got a lot of historically correct dishes and the lamps on the wall and oh, it's just lovely. Do they have any interactions with the, with the spirit that's there? Well, he'll talk about a few things. Um, I have a great video where uh, he's playing his um, tin flute 
and on the video you get an orb that's just bouncing <coughs> all over the place. So there's a lot of, you get a lot of things on your, your camera. He knew, that's why we, you know, we were there, we were looking for, you know, ghosts, ghost hunting, and uh, he'll talk a little bit about it, but um, you really, this is one of the places that you really don't need your guide to tell you much because you can just see it and feel it. And it's, it's just fascinating. I believe this is one of the locations they talk about in Ireland and, and places like Scotland. They, they refer to them as elementals. And elementals are different than just ghosts. Somebody that got killed and stayed there, however. Elementals go back like the beginning of time and they are part of the property. So they can't be cleared. You know, we talk about clearing and getting rid of them or you know, moving them on. Elementals are a different beast altogether. And, and you only hear about it in like Scotland, Ireland, England, that they are of that place. Yeah, and they're not moving. No, they're, they're not moving. No, there's a road, and I, I want to say, I think we're going to drive by it on this tour, where um, they moved the road. Mm. Because there was a bush that was considered part of the uh, elementals yep. in the fairies, and that was their bush. And the townsfolk said, no, you can't touch it. So right. they it's literally moved where they're going to put the road just because the townsfolk put up such a fight that you can't touch that, you cannot knock that down. Or they'll put little bridges over certain areas that right. they believe to be inhabited by you know, the little folk or the fairies because mm -hmm. it is bad luck on your community. To, to touch them. To touch them, to do construction through them. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Okay, so the castle. All right, now we're on to um, Rock of Cashel. It's just down the road. Um, oh, now, we will be up here at the, at the uh, Rock of Cashel. Um, and the views from up here, there's a valley on this side also. The views are stunning, and especially in May. Everything will be in bloom and green and gorgeous. And the Rock of Cashel has a wonderful story. Again, we'll have a guide. You know, you, you wear those little things around your neck with a little earpiece so you can hear them. And you walk around. Um, there's no interior, um, there's no ceiling, no walls on the inside. It's just a wide open space, cemetery in the back. And there's a lot of stories about what Rock of Cashel is. But the biggest one is um, it was a fight between St. Patrick and the devil. And it deals with throwing teeth and uh, trying to take down, take a bite out of the, the, the side of the, the hill and stuff, and that's how Rocket Cashel came to be. And on the inside of it, there is still a mural on the wall where the paint, you can still see the colors of the paint. Um, but our tour guide has some wonderful um, spirited stories about things that have been seen walking around the grounds and stuff, so. And then we travel to Cork. We'll spend the night in Cork, we have dinner that night at our hotel. We'll check into our hotel and have dinner. Um, and then it'll be a, a late, late afternoon kind of arrival. So you have enough time to just go in, change, have dinner, and then there'll be time to walk around. We'll be right there in the town. We can walk around the little, little um, pubs and stuff. Um, to go back to what I just said, change. That really wasn't the right word to say. Usually in Ireland, what you get in dress that morning, you wear all day. You don't change for dinner. You know, everything is casual, whatever you're wearing, comfortable shoes, because it's a lot of uneven surfaces, a lot of cobblestones. We're climbing a rock of cash, and we gotta climb up. It's a very steep walkway to get up to the top to the rock of cash, and the bus can't go up there, no vehicles are allowed. Um, so there's no reason to change your clothes. Whatever you put on that day, you'll be dressing in layers, and you go to dinner that night for the same thing. Spike Island and Cold Heritage Center. <laughs> she like, just said, no, you don't have to bring your ball gowns to first. No, 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 no jackets, for this. no ties, no dress pants, no yeah. completely casual and comfortable. That's the story of it. And you know, bring a scarf, bring a couple of scarves and put it on the same outfit and you'll be set. <laughs> Looks like something new every day. Um, so this is Spike Island. Um, I forget the acreage of it, but it's supposed to be twice the size of the Alcatraz. It's considered Ireland's Alcatraz, and at one point it was the biggest prison in the world. Um, it was a fort originally, and then turned into a prison, and it has the five-star the five star type prison, mm. just like... Um, it's the Penn State, correct? Yep, and, Sar and uh, Saratoga, is it... Um, 
Fort, Fort William Henry or Fort Ticonderoga, one of them is in that star. It might be Ticonderoga. And so you'll learn all about um, that the star shape of the forts was actually created here in Ireland, and we have them here in the United States. Uh, but this um, Spike Island took a sad turn uh, over the years. It housed the worst of the worst in prisoners. Um, and during the famine and stuff, it held, unfortunately, people that really, you know, were trying to steal food and they got caught and they'd be there forever. Uh, there are well over a thousand people buried in a mass grave. Wow. There was, um, the main, the main purpose of this prison was really to torture people till they died. So we will be visiting um, the jail itself, we'll be visiting the grounds, um, we'll be visiting, there's a, another, there's a museum on, on site, we get over there by a little ferry, it's a very short distance. Um, and our tour will be customized towards our interests, so it's not just the general tour that everybody else gets. And we'll be having lunch on the island also. After we leave the island, we're going to head um, right back over to Cove. Cove uh, Heritage Center was the last stop of the Titanic. I was at the Titanic um, Museum earlier this year, and what a powerful moving place. The energy in that place is just amazing. It's, it's heavy, it's beautiful, and it's sad all at the same time. So there's a beautiful Heritage Center here that talks about Cove, the people in and out of it. There's a huge exhibit on the Titanic, and um, you know a lot of stories of people that have come through there. And then we have a free evening in Cove. We're staying right there in Cove and uh, you're free to do what you want to do. There is free, oops, I think I went too far, free evening on your own and you're not, you're on your own but you're not on your own. So our bus driver will give recommendations. What type of evening are you looking for? You want a nice sit down dinner, go here. You're looking for a pub, here. If you want music and drinks, go here. So it's always, um, you're never literally on your own. You're free to dine wherever you want, but we'll get a bunch of suggestions on where to go and what to do. Uh, the next morning we get up and we hit, we were a famous but learning Kessel. So those of you that don't speak very eloquently, you'll definitely have to kiss the Blarney Stone. Um, there are several buildings on the, uh, on the Blarney Stone grounds. There's a beautiful garden that's supposed to be full of fairies. Um, there's, uh, the greenery is stunning. So the Blarney Castle itself, there's, this is the big one, it's the castle. There's no interior to it. There's a very small catwalk type thing around the inside of it. So you go through the spiral staircase on the inside and you come out on top and there's a stone walkway and a bar. And you walk around the outside of it. You get over to the guy, there's an old gentleman always just sitting there. He has you sit down. Sit on your butt, lean backwards, flip your head over, and the Blarney Stone is back here. So you're hanging upside down, and he's holding on to you, because from where you sit to where you have to flip over and kiss is open to the four stories below you. So he hangs on to you, so you'll just keep completely flip over and fall down. You kiss it, he wipes it, you get up and move up. It's a fantastic experience. It's a must-do. <laughs> Except for if you have the gift of gab, you're not supposed to. Right, I have the it. gift of gab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not bending over. I have, I have the gift of gab too, and I've kissed it several times. Oh, so. <laughs> so then you kind of keep getting it back again. Yeah, it just, it just keeps coming and going. So now you're afraid of heights. <laughs> yes, it is very um, height intimidating. Oh, great. But I've been with people that have done it that have been afraid of heights. You just look this way instead of this way. <laughs> And uh, you'll be so thrilled afterwards that you actually did it. Um, now, depending on what you enjoy, I mean, the castles are great and stuff, but across the street are the Blarney Woolen Mills. This is not a spiritual experience at all unless you consider shopping spiritual experience. <laughs> <laughs> Blarney Woolen Mill is humongous. It's got everything you could possibly want in it, from sweaters to china to perfume to jewelry. So, for those of you that like to shop, you're going to get up the stairs of the, the castle, you're going to kiss it, you're going to be down in the corner. We will have a couple of hours uh, between uh, the Blarney Stone and the mill. It is the best place to shop the entire week we're there, if shopping is your thing. Shopping is my thing, so okay. love the Blarney so cool. Woolen Mill, you can have lunch there too. Um, and there's some great, there's a great chocolate shop just around the corner also. We will go with you, Yeah, Yes. That's right. <laughs> um, just around the 
uh, corner is Ross Castle. Ross Castle is a fairly unknown castle, um, an undervisited castle within um, that area. Uh, we'll take, I think we're taking the jaunt, are we taking a jaunting car? We might be taking the jaunting car to get in there. I don't remember. Um, but again, it was a, a, a story of woe, you know, waiting for, waiting for the man to come, and he doesn't come, so she kills herself, or vice versa. Um, there is a spirit that walks the grounds that has seen, been seen by many and many people. And it's a place within the national park, so it's a beautiful area. So you're getting the spookiness of the castle and the spirits that's often seen walking around, and then you get the beautiful vista of it being in the national park. Reminds me a little bit of the Adirondack Park, but um, it's an Ireland, so it is just a tad bit greener, a tad bit prettier. And again, that'll be an escorted tour while we're there that walk us around. Then we're headed to Killarney. Um, Killarney is just a beautiful, it is your what you picture Ireland to be. It's a beautiful little town with all the quaint shops and the pubs, and you walk the streets and um, they had a cute little metaphysical store right there in, in oh, town also, which is nice. And um, so we're checking into uh, our Kalani Hotel that night, and that night we are fortunate enough to have a gallery reading with Katie. She's going to do a gallery reading for all of us. Um, in the hotel, we'll be down, I believe, in the basement of our hotel, so we won't have to go far. And then after that, we will have our dinner right in the hotel. And you're free to go out and explore corn. We're spending two nights in Clarny, which is a great plus because it's such a beautiful town to explore. The next morning, we're going to get up and we're going to drive the Dingle Peninsula. Now, there's not a whole lot of spirit going on on this particular day. Um, we are going to drive the Dingle Peninsula, which affords amazing views of uh, the ocean and the outer islands. For anybody that's a Star Wars fan, we'll have an opportunity to see... Um, uh, oh my god, what's the name of the island? Just went out of my head. Skellig Island. You can see Skellig Island on a clear day. Last time I was there, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. But um, you can see Skellig Island, which is great to sit there and take pictures and send back to family members and friends that are Star Wars fans. And say, hey, look, Skellig Island. Um, we'll drive around and have a beautiful day that day exploring things. And we'll also see the sheepdog trials, the sheepdog demonstration. Now, it is the most amazing thing, my, I don't have my sheepdogs up there, I apologize. The way these farmers work with these sheepdogs with a simple blow of a whistle and the way they round up the, the um, sheep and put them here and put them there, and also the stories the farmers tell about um, how they deal with the sheep, how they let them go for months at a time. And you have hundreds of them, they know every single one of their sheep just by looking at them and how they go into the fields and inspect them and make sure they're okay and healthy. And, it's a really fascinating um, story how they deal with the sheep and the farming over in, in Iowa. <coughs> so different than what we do here. And then that night we are going to be in Killarney. Um, our second night in Killarney, again, dinner on your own. There's some fantastic restaurants. Um, it's really hard to choose. And what's great about Killarney, a, a town like this, is you walk up and down the street and you can hear the music coming out of all the, the restaurants and the pubs. Um, so you just walk around to hear something you like, and then you go in and grab a bite. The, um, they don't really have restaurants in Ireland like you, we do right. here. It's the pub, so it's not a bar, and it's not a restaurant, it's both. So the families, everybody, you go to the pub, you eat your food, and you have a drink, and it's, you know, the kids are there, and it's just it's a different way of life. So the next day we get up, and we're headed to the Cliffs of Moor. Um, we're going to take a ferry across the River Shannon. It saves us over an hour of driving time, which is great. It's a quick ride. It's a fun ferry ride. Um, I have awful motion sickness. didn't bother me at all, so in case anybody's concerned about that. And then we're going to head to the Cliffs of Moor. Cliffs of Moor are fascinating. On a beautiful day, you can see forever. Um, this is a semi-deceiving site because they had to put railing up because so many people were falling off. <coughs> Get too close. That's not funny. No, it's not. It's not. But back in '99, I think it was my husband and I were there. We have a picture. What you used to do is you used to get close to the edge and then you crawl, get on your belly and you crawl on your belly to the edge. So we've got this amazing picture of us with our heads hanging over the edge of the cliff. But I think too many people tried it and it didn't go so well for people. 
Um, so again, you'll get, uh, they have an amazing uh, museum there, as history, they have a great cafeteria. And along this also, we can walk up to O'Brien's Tower. There's a wonderful story about O'Brien's Tower. He still haunts it. People have seen him walk in the cliffs at dusk. Um, but again, I'm, I don't want to tell you everything. <laughs> you can learn about O'Brien's Tower when we get there. And we're also going to stop at um, St. Bridges Well. St. Bridges Well, that, I forget what the station it was, National Geographic or something. I just saw last week or two weeks ago, they did a story on St. Bridges Well. Um, St. Bridges Well, and I won't do it justice, although I've been there. There's, um, it, it is um, religious Christian based. Um, there's holy water that flows on the inside. So I encourage people, you know, there's always water bottles on, on the bus. You take a water bottle, fill up the holy water if you want. Um, people come, miracles have happened here. People leave all kinds of tokens. It's fascinating, <coughs> excuse me, to go in there. It's very small. But you can go in and there's stories and pictures of everybody that's come, crutches, wheelchairs, this, that, and the other thing. And they've been cured by touching the water. And um, there's all kinds of tokens and, and memorabilia. And then you can walk up. Behind it is a cemetery up there. And um, it's actually quite a beautiful place to stop by. It's a quick stop. We're driving by it. But it's, it's worth the see because it's amazing to hear the story of what people come and do there. And there's a... Um, They'll give you directions when you get there. There's a statue of Mary out front, and then there's a path, and you're supposed to walk around three times one way, three times the other way, and then you're supposed to do something else, and it's supposed to bring you good luck and stuff. But again, we'll tell you all that. They'll tell you all that when we get there. Um... So that our last night, we are staying. Um, we're staying in Limerick, which is actually the next slide. But we're going to go to a medieval banquet in a castle. So they bring you in. And you go to the big reception hall. You get a little glass of mead, which is the honeymoon wine. <coughs> I'll tell you the story about that. You go into um, the big hall. Everything is served family style. They're there. They sing. They dance. There's a few other surprises. They'll throw at you. It is all done family style. Um, big metal plates, big metal glasses. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of singing and dancing and carrying up. <coughs> Excuse me, something. In what what castle glass. is that one at? They don't assign it until a few months prior. So we're either oh, going to go interesting. to the Pogue Castle or we're going to go to Bunratty Castle. Fingers crossed for Bunratty. Um, right next to Bun Ratty is Dirty Nellies. I don't know if anybody ever heard of Dirty Nellies. Again, it's not a trip to Ireland unless you get to go to Dirty Nellies. It's this little bar that's been around for hundreds of years, and um, it's really not that dirty, but it has wonderful <laughs> food. And you know, you'll see if you ever look Dirty Nellies up online. Everybody's everybody's been there. It's a fantastic place, and there's a small Barney Wool Mills next to it. So hopefully, we get to go there. But either one of them are fantastic. I've been to both of them. You're just in this giant castle, and often you're encouraged to take pictures in the main hall, and you'll see lots of orbs and floaty stuff on your photos and videos and stuff. Cool. It's a lot of fun. We're staying in Limerick that night because it's like 12 minutes from the airport. We'll be getting up the next morning and flying out of Shannon. Our flight's at 12:30, so again, you don't have to get, um, you don't have to have uh, an early morning. They'll tell you when to have your luggage out. Have breakfast, enjoy your morning. We'll hop on the bus, we'll head to Shannon Airport. Shannon Air, I love flying out of Shannon Airport to come home. It is like Albany small, but nicer. There's a little shopping, there's a couple places to eat. I've always had just walked up to the desk and handed in my luggage. No lines, no waiting, really easy to get in and out of. We'll fly home from Shannon. Our flight leaves about 12:30, and we get back into JFK about 3:30 in the afternoon on the same day. So when we leave on Friday, May 1st at 9 o'clock at night, we arrive in Ireland on Saturday, May 2nd at 8.30 in the morning. When we leave Ireland on Saturday, May 9th at 
12.30, we arrive back in JFK on Saturday the 9th at 3.30 because of the time difference. Um, our bus will be waiting for us and I, I would expect we'd be back into the Albany area around 7 o'clock depending on how, you know, traffic and that kind of stuff. So just to give you a quick look, we're staying at um, the Camden Court Hotel in Dublin. Um, like I said, it's just a few, it's a few blocks or a few buildings away from Cassidy's Pub, which is a great fun time. Um, this particular hotel does have a pool, if you're so inclined to go swimming, it has a pool and a hot tub, a fitness center. Um, most of the hotels do have a fitness center if you like to work out and do that on your vacation. This is in Cork. We're spending two nights at this hotel. It's on the river and um, hoping to get the rooms that face the river. It's gorgeous. Again, a nice modern type hotel. Lovely food at this place. Walkable to other things. Killarney Isle Hotel. This is in uh, Killarney. Two nights here. Uh, this is where Katie will be doing her evening and messages. And uh, again, the quaint little town that you picture Ireland to be. We're going to find it here in Killarney. And everything's within walking distance. And then our last night, Limerick. The last <laughs> new hotel. Um, I think this one has a pool also. I didn't write it down, but I'm pretty sure this one has a pool. Um, and again, by the time we, we spend our day touring, we have our medieval banquet that night, we will come back to the hotel before we go to the banquet. And um, again, this is only 10, 12 minutes from the, the banquet, the medieval banquet back to our hotel and then we get up and leave from there. Uh, boop, boop. And that's it. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. Hi, that's amazing. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Come on up. Come on up. No. Go, go, go. No. I do this all the time. <laughs> I am super oh, grateful. I'm <laughs> super grateful to you for putting this together and so excited to see who comes along on the trip. Um, it's just a dream come true. Yeah. And and really what you planned, I, obviously, we could not have planned better. Yeah. Yeah, and, and trips like this, because it is a, a niche and a unique experience, the people that tend to go on the trip are all like-minded, get along, you know, right. you're, you're all there for the same reason. So, you know, it's, it's always a wonderful fun. We have a lot of fun. We have a lot of laughs. Our bus driver, is amazing. They tell all these stories of history and, and current stuff about you know the school system, the retirement system, um, the history. Wait to hear about. Wait to hear the real story about the potato famine. I'm not going to tell you because it's just <laughs> fascinating to have an Irishman tell you the real story of the uh, potato famine. It's just completely fascinating. Um, the way we've been taught, we learned it is not exactly what really happened. So there's so much more to a tour like this. The bus drivers really put a lot of, you know, they are tour guides themselves. And um, another thing to mention about a tour like this, uh, if you've ever done an escorted tour before, this, there are no options. So our bus driver isn't going to be trying to sell us anything. There's not, everything's included per the itinerary, except for, you know, your almost every lunch and a couple of dinners. Um, so he's, we're not going to show up in a town. He's like, hey, you know, you can hang out at your hotel tonight or you can go do this. There's none of that. Everything's included as you see the itinerary, and like I said, often we'll stick in a little, a little extra surprises of fun stuff that we weren't expecting. So, um, thank you all for coming. In your packets in front of you, um, I do have the itinerary. I have a copy of the reservation form, and I have a copy of uh, a travel insurance brochure. Travel insurance is completely optional. I highly recommend it. If you purchase insurance within 14 days of your trip deposit, it covers cancellation due to pre-existing medical conditions. So that also extends out to parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts and uncles. So if somebody has a medical issue that might arise before you travel that would prevent you from traveling, it would be covered if you bought the insurance within 14 days of deposit. You do this on your own or for you? I'll, do, I'll take care of it for you. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, you can purchase it anytime. I always tell my clients at least do it by final payment because that's when you're under penalties is when final payment comes along. And um, it covers like misconnection, not that we, we don't have a layover, but if we're on the bus and something happens and we miss our flight, God forbid, cancel, cancel. Um, the biggest thing with the insurance that I find is emergency, ac uh, emergency accident and medical sickness. 
Um, most insurance companies do not cover you when you travel outside the country. So if you're traveling and you're in a foreign country and you get sick, you get injured, you need medical attention, in most cases it's not covered by your insurance company. It's an out-of-pocket expense. So, um, you know, it's great if your bags don't show up, you know, you, they give you a stipend to spend per day. And those are always great, but it's the medical and the sickness and accident that's really the big thing that I worry about for my clients when traveling. Um, so, I, you know, I can certainly, it's cost on, uh, it's based on age and cost of trip, so I'm certainly help, happy to help you guys with that if you want more information also. I yes. came with a couple of questions. Okay. If you don't mind just running no. running down through them a few and then everybody jump in if you have sure, yeah. I love other questions. ones. So you mentioned back to Albany. Is there transportation from Albany to JFK included in this or what? there is not. Okay. So what I do is I arrange for transportation to and from JFK. What we usually do is park at the Albany Airport in their economy parking lot. It's six dollars a day to park there. You can have somebody drop you off and pick you up, whatever you choose, or you can leave your car. The bus will pick us up right there, drive us to JFK. It'll pick us up on a return and bring us right back to the right where you left your car. Okay. The cost of the bus depends on how many people are utilizing it. Okay. So um, I don't have, you know, I won't have that figure for us at least till okay. you know March, April, depending on how many people. So the first deposit's due in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, if 30 people do not sign up, at what point do you tell us the trip's not going forward and we get that deposit back, or how, how are well, we Well, yes, if the it? trip cancels, you get your money back. I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not keeping your money. Um, right now, we have just about 20 people. Okay. I do have a few people that can't, that want to go, that can't commit until the first of the year due to work. They can't, you know, you can't, they can't get their time off until the first of the year. At 20 people, which is just about where we stand right now, the price would go up $100 a person because the price is based on 30. But as we add more people, the price, the closer we get to 30, the less that $100 is. Mm -hmm. And we still have a couple more months. I'm, you know, I'm very comfortable with the fact that we're not going to have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it, it is always, it is always a possibility. But the phone keeps ringing, and Katie and I keep advertising it. Okay. And honestly, this is a a slightly difficult time of year for people with the holidays and stuff. And in my business, I've been in the business 14 years. Come mid-January, my phone is blowing up. People got through the holidays, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my god, i got to start making my plans. And that, I mean, January, February, March is my busy season. Right now, it's not my busy. People are focusing on the holidays. So okay. that's where we stand. So people can still sign up in January and give, oh, give the deposit then? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and I have a couple of people that are on the list that are planning on doing that. they got to wait to get their time off. So if we don't sign up until after January, what's the, is it still $500? I mean, the flyers, yes. Yes, yep, it is still $500. Okay. Um, I do encourage people to sign up earlier versus later, because mm -hmm. you never know. I mean, the trip could sell out. Usually the trips do sell out, so you wouldn't want to be left out. Um, what I'm doing is I'm collecting um, payments, which I have a few, and I'll deposit your checks. So you're checkbook doesn't get all screwed up and I, I'm holding that money until we have the exact number and then I will process your payments mm -hmm. because I wouldn't I don't want you to lose you know I don't want you to lose out yeah. on the nights when we're um, free mm -hmm. um, the second nights basically every night yeah. but what time are we getting back usually the same time every night and you basically answered my question that the bus driver and, and yourself have lots of suggestions mm -hmm. but if we wanted to plan to do something ahead of time, um, like we wanted to go someplace that we needed a reservation for or wanted to actually, you know, go somewhere outside of Dublin or Clarny and actually do something, what time do we usually get back? It varies by day. Okay. The, once we're on tour, we'd be better able to answer that question. Okay. Um, I have, well, for me personally, I can tell you our second day in Dublin, that Sunday when we're coming back down from Boyne Valley, I'm hoping to have the bus driver drop me off at the Jameson Distillery because, you know, I'd like to go there and do that. So, you know, if it's on the way, they're happy to drop you off. And another thing, you know, sometimes people um, have been to Ireland before, they're not interested in what we're doing that day. When, it, when we're spending the two nights, mm -hmm. 
and there's something that we're doing that you're not interested in doing, you don't have to do it. You just have to be on that bus when we're leaving one city and spending the night. <laughs> <laughs> don't miss the bus. And they don't have Uber and Uber. I'm just going to say they don't have Uber. No, Uber. no, Uber. no Uber. 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 So um, you are free to do with your time while we're there what you want to do with it, but you just you got to get on that bus when we're leaving one city to spend the night in another city. Are the dinners a set menu? No, they're not a set menu to order off the menu. If anybody has any food allergies or restrictions that we need to know about, I can let them know in advance. <coughs> and then is there a max you're going to cap this at? 45. Okay. 45 is my max. Um, the buses are 52 passengers. Okay. Um, the buses are immaculate and they're beautiful. They all have Wi Fi. They have um, big windows? They have, it's all windows. Okay. Giant windows. Yep. Yeah, every seat is a great seat on the bus. And um, there's a bathroom on board. The bus driver always has a big cooler of water. It's usually a dollar for water, you know, throw a dollar in the cup for your water. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, the buses are gorgeous, comfy. When do people like? Do you bring converted money? Or what do you do? Yes, you I do. Yeah, I will advise people to get um, some euros, and especially some coins and smaller bills because you don't want to, you know, go buy a bottle of water or soda or something with a twenty. Um, so you are going to want to travel with some euros. Uh, credit cards are widely accepted. They do not accept Discover cards, so leave your Discover or Mastercard and Visa your best choice. And you're obviously going to want to let your, you know, your credit card company know that you're traveling, so they don't freeze your card when you're there. Mm -hmm. um,